I'm Alice Mitchell from the Poultry Site and I'm here with... Richard Cooper from Abbey Vista. Yes, and have you had a good IPP? Yeah, I think it's been, uh, it's been busy. Yeah. Um, it's a very effective place to meet a lot of uh, key people, distributors, customers from all over the world. It also brings our own team together. We've got 20 odd, odd people here, so it's a good chance to catch up with everybody and you know what's going on in all the different markets. And it's a sort of barometer on the industry. It's, it's always interesting to, to see what, uh, what, how people are feeling, how confident they are, what are they worrying about, what are they excited about. So it's, good, so it's a great learning experience as well. Yeah, so how do you think the industry is at the moment then? Um, I think the poultry industry in the US uh, is coming off a period of, 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 of great success and profitability. Uh, we had a situation where chicken prices were high and raw material costs were reasonably low. So you know, going back 18 months, people were, were doing very, very well. It's not quite as easy anymore. Um, there's also a lot of issues and challenges in the industry. Um, you know, AI outbreaks are worrying people. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's what, what they call woody breast or white striping is, is, is a little bit of an issue where, uh, you know, meat quality is compromised in, in, in heavy broilers. Um, I think the, the antibiotic free diets is, is, a, is a heavy talking point. Yeah. How, how are we going to get around it? What's going to happen? Are we going to see a lot more necrotic enteritis? Um, are we going to paradoxically see more welfare problems as we take antibiotic growth promoters out? There's a lot of, lot of different debates around the whole subject. So there's, there's a lot going on. I think the industry is in pretty decent shape generally. Yeah. So what do you see as the trends for the future moving forward then? I think I'm only really qualified to comment on future trends where, where we as a business you know, are exposed or involved. Um, I think the future for enzymes is absolutely fantastic, very, very exciting, particularly phytase. The whole use of phytase is changing radically compared with three or four years ago. Every month we're discovering more about how phytase works and about the importance of breaking down phytate yeah. and by breaking down all that phytate the benefits you can have on the actual you know digestive physiology of the animal and I, th I think the use of phytase will grow quite quite substantially in the next five or ten years if you go back five years people were using what we call a single dose so 500 units of a, of a, of a phytase there's a lot of people now using three times that and getting very, very good results. It's a big part of our business. 60% of our business, is, a phytase business, is, is with is customers who superdose. So it's made a huge difference to us as a business. We've pioneered it. We've, I think, led the debate and the agenda on it. So it's been a, it's been quite, quite an exciting ride. But I, I don't think it's over. I think phytase use could could increase further. We've got customers who are testing six times the normal dose and getting. Quite, quite viable, you know, financially viable results. So, yeah. so I think the enzyme world is is, is changing. Um, I, you know, we, you know, we pride ourselves on pushing the boundaries, and um, you know, we talk about extraordinary science. It's an aspiration. You know, we don't want to be big-headed about it. We've made some breakthroughs, but uh, it's what we want to do and want to be. We want to be the, the company that brings that science to life and brings it to the industry yeah. rather than just talks about it. So. Yeah. So how, how are you communicating the science to the market? It's a very good question. question. You know, how do we communicate? We do a lot of work. We work with 82 different universities around the world. We spend a lot of money. We get excited about it, but, <laughs> you know, getting that knowledge and that understanding across to a broader audience is a, is a huge challenge. Uh, you know, everybody's bombarded with information. So we're trying something different this year. We're running a series of videos, um, roughly 15 minutes on a specific topic. And, and those videos are available to anybody that wants to watch them. Rather than trying to pull people into a seminar or doing one-to-ones with people or putting out lots of technical articles in the media, which obviously, you know, the, the industry is bombarded by as well. So we've just put, um, we've, we've, we're releasing a series of three videos to start with and when, then we'll do more afterwards. The first one is, is, is one with Dr. Mike Bedford, really talking about a new way of looking at phytase and phytate, a new way of defining superdosing, a new way of industry getting the most out of it. And that video went live a couple of days ago on the, on the abvista.com website and there will be more to follow. So we're really keen to see how that goes down and what sort of uptake we have on that, on that video series. Okay. We've completed a video just recently explaining how we think superdosing is working in poultry and pigs. 
and uh, really there's three main elements to how we think it's working but the, this particular video is focusing on one element of it which is destruction of some particular uh, IP esters, IP3 and IP4, which previously have been thought of as being fairly innocuous and actually recent data has suggested they're quite nasty and quite uh, effective uh, inhibitors of growth or anti-nutrients. And uh, one of the problems is that when we use standard doses of phytases, rather than getting rid of these products, we actually create them. So what we're finding is in order to really enhance the way an animal can grow and make it far more efficient, we have to use much higher levels of phytase than we're currently using to get rid of these IP3 and IP4 phytase, uh, phytase, phytate esters. Okay. okay, subsequent videos will look at the more, uh, let's say, accepted or established viewpoints of how superdosing works and that's particularly looking at phytic acid or IP6 destruction because that is a known anti-nutrient unlike IP3 and IP4 and uh, of course the provision of inositol because if you break phytic acid all the way down take all the phosphates off you make inositol and that is seen to be uh, an, uh, a nutrient with uh, beneficial effects on growth rate and uh, feed efficiency but okay. they will be covered in future, future videos. Okay.